Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about face portraits. So, what is a face portrait? A face portrait is a very nice way of visualizing the behavior of a two dimensional state space system with no input. And these are useful because they allow you to get to grips with the kind of simple um, state space models, and also they can help build intuition for some of the more complicated um, definitions and stability results that we'll encounter later in the course. It's good to have a concrete 2D uh, picture of what's going on in these models to help lay the foundations for what is to come. So really today we're talking about 2D systems uh, with no input. So with input equal to zero. So what does that mean? It means we have a state space model with two states, x1 and x2, um, in our standard form. So x dot is equal to some function of our state, which in this case is just got two components, and no input. So this is what we're talking about today. And what a phase portrait will allow us to do is sort of understand this equation in quite a convenient and visual way. So what is a phase portrait? Um, it's a collection of arrows illustrating x dot and maybe a collection of sample trajectories. So it's set of arrows which indicate the direction of x dot at different points and a set of sample trajectories. So why are these things interesting? Well, x dot is a vector so in this case, it's a two-dimensional vector pointing in the direction of changing x. So these little arrows uh, corresponding to x dot allow you to help uh, allow you to sort of visualize the way um, your state is moving around the state space. Um, and then these sample trajectories give you some examples of trajectories starting at different points. And by seeing all of this information on a single picture, it sort of gets easy to see. Oh, if I start my system in this point, what's going to happen? If I start my system in this point, what's going to happen? Is it going to tend to a stable equilibrium point? Is it going into a limit cycle? Is it wandering off to infinity somewhere? And so that's what a phase portrait is. And probably the easiest way to see all of this is to just do a kind of a concrete example. So a phase portrait is just a picture in 2D where we have one axis uh, for one of our states, x1, and another axis for another one of our states, x2. And we just draw on a lot of arrows corresponding to x dot, and maybe a few sample trajectories. So to flesh this out a bit, let's suppose that the system that we're interested in, well, it's got two states, let's say it's governed by this uh, differential equation. So I'm going to have x1 squared minus 2x1, plus x2 plus 1, and then x2 dot is going to be given by minus x1 minus x2 plus 1. We'll just, for the sake of argument, let's say what well, this was our system. Um, so to draw our face portrait, all we do is we take lots of little points and we draw arrows in the direction of x dot. So to give you an example, let's take this point here. So this is the point x1, x2 is equal to 1, 2, and let's just draw on the vector corresponding to x dot. Well, the x component of that vector is given by this term here, evaluated at the point 1, 2, and the y component of that vector is given by this term here, evaluated at the point 1, 2. So what do we get? Well, if x1 is 1 and x2 is 2, this is 1 squared minus 2 plus 2 plus 1. 
So those go and we get So our x component is a vector of length 2 in the x direction. So this is f1 evaluated at the point with coordinate 1, 2. And similarly, we can go ahead and find f2. So we get minus 1, minus 2, plus 1 is minus 2. So we get a vector of length 2 in that direction. And so this is just f2 evaluated at the point 1, 2. And this vector here is x dot. So this is x dot evaluated at this point. And on the phase portrait, you don't normally draw the, um, the vector to scale because we're about to, we do this for lots of points. And if we had these long vectors everywhere, it would get very crowded. So you tend to just draw on a little arrow that's indicating the direction of x dot. And well, why is this interesting? Well, if our system is at this particular point in our state space, this arrow tells you the direction in which it's changing. So a little bit of time later, if we started here, we'd be moving in this direction, and we'd sort of be heading this way. And a face portrait just consists of doing this for lots and lots of different points. Typically, you would do it on a fine grid. And of course, you wouldn't do this by hand. You would get a computer to do it. But we like doing things by hand. So um, let's just do another point, for example. And then I'll draw on um, a few more points corresponding to different points in the state space. So let's just take, for example, this point down here. So what is x dot evaluated at that, at that point? Well, we just do exactly what we did before. Substitute the values of our point into f1 and f2, draw on the components, and that will give us the vector corresponding to x dot. So here we have x1, x2 is equal to the point 2, minus 2. So what is our x component? Well, that's just 2 squared minus 2 times 2, so that's 0, plus uh, minus 2 plus 1. So that's minus 1. So that's an arrow in this way. So minus 1 in the x1 direction. So this is, um, let's go and have a look. This is f1 evaluated at point 2, minus 2. And similarly, we find the y component. So we get minus 2 minus minus 2 plus 1 is plus 1, so our f2 component is a little arrow that way. So x dot is this vector here, and what we would draw on our face portrait is just a little arrow, something like that. And this is telling us that if we happen to arrive at this point in the state space and we simulate forward in time a little bit, well, this is the direction in which x is going to change. So a little bit of time later, we move along this arrow. And to build up our face portrait, we just draw lots and lots of these arrows on. So if we do that, we find sort of over here, we get arrows that look something like this. And if we're down here, we find that we get more arrows that look something like this. And over here, we get arrows that look something like this. And here, we get something kind of, we'll just draw some more on. And out here, we get some arrows going like this. Over here, we get some arrows like this. And to build up our face portrait, we would just take lots of little points and um, find out the direction of the next lot of all of them and draw little um, arrows. To, um, um, to sort of show the direction of changing x dot. And on top of this, we normally um, draw on a few sample trajectories. So what does that mean? Well, what we do is we take a candidate point, let's just say this point here, and we set this as our initial condition to our system, and we simulate it, and we just plot x of t over time. So here, 
we start our system with initial condition x of 0. And what is this? This is, this is one. Say not one minus three. We get our nonlinear equation solver, we simulate and we get a solution which tells us what x1 of t and x2 of t are, are over time, and we just plot them. So this is where they are at time t is equal to zero. And then a little bit further in time we find we go this way, and we keep going, we plot out our whole simulation, and we find that we do something like that. And that's interesting, it seems to be spiralling in to the point one zero. Okay, well, why don't we just check that quickly? Well, if x1 is equal to 1 and x2 is equal to 0, well, x1, so that's 1 squared minus 2 plus 0 plus 1, which is 0. And here we get minus 1 minus 0 plus 1, which is also equal to 0. So this is an equilibrium point. And when we simulated our system, it looks like a stable equilibrium point, And we'll use ideas based on this uh, phase portrait to give definitions of stability in later lectures. And what's really nice is that this trajectory seems to be following the directions being indicated by the arrows. So we, we, don't, we almost didn't need to simulate. We could have just sort of guessed just by looking at these arrows, which tell us the direction in which x is changing, and just sort of join them together. And the more fine our grid of arrows, the easier this is to do. And we might do the same when we start with an initial condition down here, and we simulate our system to find a solution and we find that this is a solution and that sort of fits with the arrows that we've drawn and the arrows seem to be pointing us into the equilibrium point this way. What's kind of interesting is going on over here. I mean it doesn't look like we're heading into the equilibrium point over here. And indeed if we initialize our system up here and we simulate we get some trajectory that looks like that. And similarly down here, we would get a trajectory that looks like this. And somewhere in between, we get some curve. And if you're slightly to this side of that curve, the solutions tend off over that way. And if you're this side of that curve, you spiral in to the equilibrium point. And when you get a bit of familiarity with these pictures, you're able to sort of visualize what's going on very quickly um, and in a very convenient way. And that's what a phase portrait is. And now we're going to go and do a little bit more analysis, particularly of uh, equilibrium points, and give some little tips for how to draw these things quickly by hand.